Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another fine episode of State of Society, hashtag my story. My good name is Mike G and this is episode 13. Today I have an amazing, amazing young lady. She is Talia Smith from UK and South Africa and she is working with Initiatives of Change International. It's a global movement working in around 80 countries uh, on issues of trust building, you know, trying to solve, trying to respond to issues of conflict uh, in many parts of the world through its programs. And Talia Smith will be telling us about her involvement with this and why she's so committed and why actually she is in Kenya today. So welcome Talia. Thanks Mike. Thank welcome you very much. Welcome to my show. It's good to be here. Thank All you. Right. Tell us about yourself. Sure. And welcome to Kenya. Thank you. <laughs> Karibu. Thank you. Yeah. So I was born in South Africa. Yeah. Um, and... I think it was during those early years where I began to really notice just the differences between haves and haves nots. Yeah. So when I'd look back on my journey, it was those early years of growing up in South Africa and just being aware of people on the streets with begging and not having enough. And so I think it all began in South Africa for me. Yeah. Um, later on in my childhood, I moved to the UK with my parents and my sister. Yeah. I had my high school there. Um, then I went to university. I did my undergraduate degree in international business because okay. I was really interested in people and cultures and I thought that would be a good way to go around the world and learning and discovering. But it was soon into that degree that I had a change of heart and I knew this wasn't for me. You yeah. know, we were motivated by different things and I, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my vision for the world was... Um, in a different way that business was leading me to. Yeah. And it was also then that I got given a book that profoundly um, helped change my direction. And it was an introduction to Buddhism. Okay. And it was Buddhism. Also Buddhism. The, the Buddhism, the religion. Yes, right. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And just this um, selfless service and compassion and yeah. living for others. It just began to shift in my mind and connect it to my upbringing in South Africa. Yeah. But I finished my four-year degree and I went to Canada for one year to study. Mm -hmm. And then after I graduated, I did my master's in okay. international development, which was much better. And I you, learned... did, you didn't become a Buddhist? No, I didn't become a Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that for later, maybe. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then I began yeah, learning about mm -hmm. the, the theories of helping the world. Okay. So that was a one-year course. And during that time, I interned for Amnesty International, mm -hmm. a big human rights organization. And again, just develops my understandings of um, abuse, conflict, um, peace, reconciliation. Yeah. And then after I graduated, I booked a one-way ticket to Asia because uh, I wanted to get some volunteer experience. And I still didn't know exactly what part of development that I wanted to work in. Yeah. Um, and then that one-way flight lasted four years. Yeah. So that, was, that was in your 20s now? That was in my 20s. Okay. Yeah, I left when I was 23. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I was majority of time in Cambodia and in Laos, okay. working for different human rights-based projects, mm -hmm. focusing actually on human trafficking for about two years oh, in that's Cambodia. Oh, Southeast Asia. Yes, exactly. How did you yeah. come uh, across the Initiative of Change? So Initiative of Change was just after my four years in Cambodia, and I okay. came back. Um, unfortunately, I had a bad motorbike accident, so oh. I needed to come home mm -hmm. um, to get that sorted. So I wasn't really ready to come home, and I left with my backpack, yeah. what I arrived with four years ago, mm -hmm. and I just didn't know how, how I would settle back into Europe, because my heart very much was in the anti-human trafficking project in yeah. Cambodia. Um, so after I healed, I was just looking online. I was researching on Google um, what NGOs are in London. Mm -hmm. But specifically, I was looking for something with a spiritual side as yeah. well as social change work. And that's when I came across Initiatives of Change. I don't know what words I put into Google. Yeah. I've been asked a few times. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, and then, you know, one thing led to another and I mm -hmm. got um, involved in a few different projects. And, and now I'm involved full time mm -hmm. and with Initiatives of Change International right. while I'm in Africa and then back to Initiatives of Change UK in a few weeks. So when you met the ideas of IFC, you got interested and you wanted immediately to know what they do and you started getting involved with their work? Exactly, yeah. This was exactly. in the UK now. This was in the UK, okay. yeah, just when I came back, yeah. Okay. And I remember my friend saying, you won't find such an organisation like with its spirituality yeah. and social change. Like mm -hmm. It's in a very unique concept, but mm -hmm. 
for me, it was just in my heart that I wanted these two things to be part of my day-to-day -day life. Um, so, yeah, hugely so grateful what, to what, what, what did you find most unique about the ideology of the Initiatives of Change? Well, Initiatives of Change works to strengthen the moral and spiritual foundations of society. Okay. So that in itself is a big task and a very, already a very unique avenue and direction to take. No other NGOs are working on that level, as well as focus action in communities. Okay. So to have both of those... Um, that was my immediate notice of how different mm. this organisation is. Mm. And then once I got to know about the philosophy of change, mm. which Frank Bookman, the founder, um, came up with just after the Second World War, and yeah. the philosophy mm. has changed, and wherever we are in the 80 countries of the world doing work, yeah. it's the same four steps to changing the world. Yeah. And it all starts with yourself, changing yourself first. So that was a profound, you know, a penny dropped in my mind mm. and in my search for answers to conflicts and issues that I began experiencing in Cambodia, in Laos. Right. But the theory of this organisation began to make sense to me. Yeah. So you started feeling that you, you could participate in becoming a part of the solution to what mm -hmm. you, the problems you saw? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yes. But how about your own personal life? Did you feel like IFC or Initiatives of Change prompted or inspired you to change some few things in your own life, even behavior-wise, actions, some few relationships here and there. Yeah, Especially at that time, you were still, yeah. you, you still in your 20s then. I was still in my 20s, yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you find anything with IOFC that prompted you or inspired you to change something in your own life? Maybe your own personal self, the, 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 the personal things that you know about yourself. Did you, did you change something? Yes, I did, yeah. It, it forced me to take a real honest inventory almost an assessment mm. of my life which I'd never done before and I yeah. thought you know I'm quite a good person mm. but initiatives of change gives you these four guidelines which are absolute honesty unselfishness yeah. love and purity of heart and motive mm -hmm. and all different religions around the world have their own set of values but yeah. we highlight these four mm. um, even back in the founders days yeah. so to sit down um, and just to assess my life on these four standards mm. I realised that there were small things that, you know, I, were, I wasn't being totally honest. I wasn't um, being totally unselfish. So I began to correct these things and just also the concept of taking responsibility, which IFC emphasises. Yeah. And I wasn't taking responsibility in conflicts with my sister, for example. So as soon as I began to put things right in my life, thanks to initiatives of change, I further began to appreciate, respect, and soon it just took over my life in the way... In the way I live, yeah, yeah. So I was very keen to just be more involved to bring that gift to other people, like it has for me. That's yeah. interesting. You could perhaps tell us how you ended up in Kenya this time. Yeah. So Africa, because of my upbringing, what I mentioned before about growing up in South Africa, yeah. it's always been in my heart. Mm. And when I wanted to go volunteering and gain experience in the field, I was still I was daunted by Africa to be honest. I was mm. just didn't know how I would begin to help towards the challenges and I didn't feel ready. Yeah. And because of this Buddhism book, I decided to choose Buddhist countries to go and gain field work experience. But that thought and dream and passion and heart for Africa has stayed. Mm. And then I thought maybe it would be in a missionary capacity or humanitarian field that yeah. I would go back to Africa. But then I found out that Initiatives for Change works in about nine or ten African countries. Mm. And my commitment to it had grown. So it was last year in October I left. And I thought, okay, this is the year to go spend a year in Africa and just mm. giving back to the continent of my birth. But more so, I think it had something to do with the colonial injustices that I just was more aware and I felt for. And especially with the apartheid in South Africa, mm. I just felt still so bad about that, mm. um, about the ancestors' role in that, yeah. and that healing needs to come from people today. Mm. So I wanted, there was also that element in my journey and heart to go back to Africa. So you wanted to be part of something that could be as a way of showing that some things could be done, like trying to reconcile these two yeah uh, these two factions yes yeah okay. and just i think just having my role in trying to make something better of those deep injustices yeah. in yeah. in countries that i'm from and where my ancestors are from yeah. so i just really wanted to spend time with the people and the culture and the, the rich heritage yeah. and yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah. But, but what do you think about the 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 the, the, 
people from your own part of the world, mm -hmm. what do they think about these injustices? And maybe, I don't know if you have had conversations about it, but what do you think is their picture of that context? Well, I think it all comes down to education. So yeah. what young people think in the UK, for example, is what we've been taught in our history lessons. Yeah. And we weren't taught, or I was not taught, about you know the deep-rooted um, violence and atrocities that mm -hmm. the British Empire did around the world, and especially in across Africa and Southern Africa. So yeah. we, we're not told that part of the narrative to, to the depth of the suffering that people still feel now and the you know the legacies here of land rights and so so much issues in Africa that I've, I've been hearing about still you can trace back to those colonizers um, yeah. atrocities yeah. so I don't think yeah we're not we're not taught and told the honest story um, and we need to be because yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a bold step and you'll be telling us more about your involvement with IOFC mm -hmm. and you know uh, the International Centre Core. Yes. And what you've done with uh, Core itself. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to take a short break now and we'll be back. Alright, welcome back and we are still with Talia Smith from United Kingdom and South Africa and we're talking about initiatives of change international and how she's involved with IOFC work and let's talk about purpose you talked so much about your calling your your urge to want to make a difference in lives you know people's lives but starting with your own life from what I got yeah and it's very normal for human beings to want to have purpose mm -hmm. and from what I found from you is that you kind of found something that became a drive, a driving force in you. And maybe you could tell us about that purpose that you found. I know you talked so much about you wanted this fixed, you saw that this was not right, mm -hmm. but but what is this purpose yeah. that you could... So my purpose, yeah. actually initiatives of change helped me articulate my purpose. Yeah. Um, it was from my change of heart and that Buddhism book where I became purpose driven but it was only later in years that I realised what it was. Yeah. And my purpose is to reduce the world's suffering. Mm. Um, now, more is to build on that with age and experience. Yeah. It's also to help others reach their full potential. Mm -hmm. So working with initiatives of change across Africa has helped me in that role, to be with people and their stories and just help help them see their talents and skills to lift themselves out of poverty, right. really. So it was a focus on poverty reduction from my work in um, Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. but now it's more on a, on a spiritual conscious level of helping people, yeah, to find their role in society and how they can be the better person in their family, community and, and nation, really, yeah. which is yeah. all of our initiatives of changes, mm -hmm. approach and philosophy and how we work with people yeah. um, and their stories and their journey and life. The founder, Frank Bookman, was very keen on helping others to be great. Mm -hmm. And that sentence has stayed, stayed with me. Um, so how can, how can we play a role to help others be great? Yeah. yeah. So IFC is not coming as a solution to the world's problems, but you're saying that they're coming to give hints on how conversations could perhaps maybe take place through these programs? Yes. Yeah. And how we could make... Yeah. Others feel great. That's yes. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what things have you found extremely or maybe totally disheartening about Africa and maybe our politics, maybe our way of doing things? Are there things you found that maybe you didn't expect to see this, or something that some things that maybe they, sh they, they um. maybe shocking, maybe? Well, well you read yeah. you read about the corruption, of course. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a well-known part of the narrative of mm. um, what is holding Africa back. Yeah. Um, so I think I was most shocked about the degree of corruption. Yeah. Um, but then on the plus side, the, the real determination and potential that is in this continent. Mm -hmm. And I do think it's time for the, you know, the rise of Africa it is happening. Yeah. And the entrepreneurial spirit and the creativity and the innovation mm -hmm. across all different fields is incredible it's yeah. really really impressive yeah. so i think yeah i think if 
if we can, initiatives of change in our projects around Africa can bring the values and the integrity really into workplaces, into young people's minds and the next generation of leaders, I think, you know, slowly, hopefully you can begin to see a change because yeah. it all starts with you and with your values, really. Yeah. And, you know, talking of corruption, uh, what do you think of today's state of the world, you know, in terms of human relationships and how we solve conflicts? Of yeah. course, uh, I'm asking this in the context of the globe. You yeah. know, what's happening? What, what do you see as the state of the world? Today? Yeah, yeah. Are we? Are we? Are we? Where are we now? Where are we now? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you read the media, yeah. if you read the newspapers, and you watch the TV, you think we're heading into a, like an apocalypse. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the media portrays, unfortunately, mm -hmm. a very negative, um, unnecessary viewpoint of where the world is at. Yeah. Statistically, we have less violence and less murders than mm -hmm. any other century and any yeah. other decade. Mm -hmm. So you know, we are in a good place. Um, but of course we have our challenges like mm -hmm. environmental and social crises in yeah. terms of ISIS and the terrorist element. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think that's where belonging and which also relationships come into it. Yeah. And we, our government leaders seem to think that we must fight terrorists with bombs and with arms and, mm -hmm. um, but not to look very deeply at the issue which yeah. I've learned to do through initiatives of change, to look at the underlying causes of this. You know, like why are young people joining terrorist groups? Why yeah. are they not finding a belonging? Radicalization in all Ex those things, Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and what are we not creating as a society for these youth that they find um, a belonging with terrorists? So I think it's a different way of looking at issues that we have to start doing now. And the, the deeper, yeah, the human factor in it, yeah. the relationships and... Social media distorts that, media distorts that. So we've got to almost go back to basics, uh, break down these barriers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, from your thoughts, you, for what I'm gathering from your thoughts is that most of the problems we are experiencing today are not even uh, economic or social. They are kind of caused by our own relationships as human beings mm -hmm. and how we resolve conflicts which arise out of our own conversations. Uh, but what is IFC doing to solve these conflicts mm -hmm. or to lead people into a direction of uh, reconciliation, you know, peace and healing. So initiatives of change, one of our strengths is mm -hmm. creating this safe space for honest, open conversations that can be have um, to build those bridges of trust yeah. in communities, in nations, between families or individuals. Yeah. And that dialogue, again, with that human relationships, is the first step in that peace building process. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our work with whether it is Creators of Peace, which is our international women's peace building program, um, or Just Governance, working with government leaders, or our business programs with corporate leaders, yeah. is creating that safe space where where trust and relationships can be built for the good of the company, the country, the community. Yeah. Yes. And we bring and then bringing those values in into our work. Um, and then also we we talk about quiet time and leading a reflection reflective lifestyle. Yeah. Because we often we've realised that it takes more than human knowledge and reason just to solve the problems of the world. We really need something yeah. deeper. Yeah. Um, and that, again, IFC offers um, different tools, mm. um, such as having a morning space for reflection to connect to a higher purpose, to find your role in making your community a different place. Because we all have this gift, um, and often in silence, the, our empowerment and inspiration can come out. But because yeah. of our busy lives and the noise, yeah, we sure. drown that out. So we get... We get more interested in materialism, consumerism, and social media rather mm -hmm. than human relationships yeah. and the states of our communities. Yeah. yeah. And and nourishing our souls with exactly. reflections yeah. and all that. Exactly. So has this been helpful for you? Incredibly. Introspection. Yeah. And yeah, def to. definitely. But you got this from Buddhist or from initiatives of change? I got yeah. Well I got practicing it through okay. Buddhism, yeah, okay. in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Um that more of the meditation. But, but, then, but for the, the Buddhist yeah. it's, it's more of meditation. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, what's the difference? So for me the difference is um my morning quiet time yeah. is more conscious of um my actions and motives and attitudes. Yeah. The meditation that I practice is more just to still, still the mind, still the thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, but this is there's more of a conscious proactiveness to it. And I I write and I find out, you know, what oh 
you know, maybe yesterday I did something that wasn't according to our four moral standards as yeah. a guide that yeah. I use. And then I realised, oh, I spoke badly to my sister. I need to reconcile that. Yeah. So it just makes, it's more of a, yeah, a conscious effort on how mm. I live day to day, really. Quite yeah. interesting. Yeah. So thanks a lot for a lot of information about your work and this amazing journey you are through. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Thank you very much. And I hope to see you sometime, yes. somewhere, maybe in... UK? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, definitely. Or back uh, in Kenya, hopefully. What, what, yeah, you're very much welcome and very much welcome to my show. Thank again. you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what you would want to say to the young person who is watching you yes. now from Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's your camera. Okay. Maybe it's your, 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 your last take. Okay, yeah. my last take. Um, I've met a lot of young people around Africa and I've just been taken by their ideas. But often they say they don't know where to start to implement them or to, to make their step in their career. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage them to um, reach out to others and have a collective effort because we face so many challenges and to do it on our own is difficult. Um, and many people we think we have to do it on our own. But to reach out to others and just to keep on with your dream and your vision and to go for it really because there's a lot of talent and potential here with the young people. All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Hope Thank you. you. Yes. Thank good. you very much. Asante. Thanks for watching and continue watching. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Experience Media Kenya, and we are grateful. Thank you very much. Until next time, bye bye.